Hello folks, Phil Gallagher of Three Than You here for another Legacy video. Today we're going to be playing with Zane's Riddle Smith combo deck list. Um, this is not really an established archetype, so uh, buckle up, things are going to be a little interesting here. Um, so let's start with our Scars of Mirrodin Uncommon. Whenever you cast an artifact spell, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. Um, this doesn't really look like it's up to snuff for legacy power level at first glance. Now, uh, Oval Chase, Daredevil, definitely not Over Chase, definitely not, and I won't make that mistake throughout the video, I promise. Uh, anyway, um, this card says whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, you may return this from your graveyard to your hand. So imagine you have a Riddlesmith in play, and you play an artifact. You draw a card, you discard Oval Chase Daredevil. You probably draw an artifact. You play the artifact, you return Oval Chase Daredevil to your hand, and you've cast an artifact spell so you can draw a card. If you do, discard a card. See where this is going? This turns into a card advantage engine. And then we're going to have some ways to win that involve artifacts. We're going to have Patchwork Automaton. Uh, best little boy here. Gets very, very thick quickly. And we also have Kappa Cannon here. But you'll notice that like this deck list is pretty lean. There's not actually too many win conditions. That's because we're hoping to draw most of our deck. We have Echo of Eons plus Lion's Eye Diamond as another way to go and get card advantage. And we also have this thing, Containment Construct. When you discard a card, you may exile that card from your graveyard. If you do, you may play that card this turn. This turns Lion's Eye Diamond into Black Lotus, right? So, like, let's imagine you have, like, an Emery in hand, and Lion's Eye Diamond is your only mana. You can crack LED for triple blue, send Emery to exile, and then use the Lion's Eye Diamond to cast the Emery. Okay, that's pretty cool. This is another way to kind of get value off of your discards. We have a couple of Urza Sagas here so that we can go and like grind out some games if we need to. Uh, but essentially in the donation, I was said like, yeah, just try to win early and often. The Urza Saga is there for backup. It's not the primary plan, so don't lean on it. Um, and to kind of help visualize this, I've set up a scenario where I have a bunch of these cards in the tournament practice room here. So like, let's say I go and cast a Lion's Eye Diamond with these cards in play. All right, so I trigger, trigger a Riddlesmith, okay? I cast an artifact spell. I will draw a card. I will discard a card. Now, if I wanted, I could exile that card and play it from exile. I absolutely don't want, though, right? And I drew a new artifact. I return these things to hand, and now I'm up some cards. And I can go and repeat this process, like casting an LED, using the Riddlesmith to loot, getting a new card, discarding this, and hey, like, I can churn through a good portion of my deck while doing this. Um, just quickly showing off the other interaction here that I was talking about. I can go and discard something with LED, and I can choose to send any number of these cards to exile, um, just for the sake of this. Let's just always yield to those now. So, like, I now have cards in exile uh, under this card that I can choose to go and cast from exile. And Emery also goes and gives me the ability to cast stuff from my graveyard as well, and I'm going to end up like being able to play Echo of Eons, Refuel, and then just continue to just loot, 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 loot. So the idea is you don't need to find very many win conditions if you just churn through this many cards. So that's kind of the idea of this deck list. Um, there's a lot of moving parts, and there's going to be a lot of places where I can be interacted with, like creature removal will be fine against me, counter spells will be fine against me, um, but I'm hoping like the rogue factor of my opponents not knowing what I'm doing, plus just like the sheer number of weird interactions that I have kind of gives me an edge against opponents who don't really know what's going on. Uh, anyway, I hope you all will enjoy the video. If you're new here, please consider subscribing if you like the content. And if you're a regular, please throw me a like before this video begins. That's the easiest way to support my content for free. If you want to support me financially and you're in the position to do so, uh, you can do so by becoming a YouTube member, a patron on Patreon, or by doing a donation decklist to get one of your sweet ideas on the channel. Let's battle. Okay.
Um, so I'm on the draw here. I'm kind of one mana short from being able to do some really cute things. Um, I think I probably just mulligan this one. Like, there's so many hands that are just going to have an LED and an Echo that are going to be stronger than this. Um, I think I keep this one. Um, you know, I'm, uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and throw a Mox Opal on bottom. Just, I know it's kind of a weird line, but feels okay to do. Um, basically, I'm hoping for, like, not Volcanic Island right here. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> All right. So, place your bets right now. How large is this Patchwork Automaton at the end of my turn? I'm going with 11-11. <laughs> All right. Here we go. All right. Lotus Petal. Mox Opal. Play third artifact for metal craft. No, no, it's fine to do it in this order. All right, blue, some other color, patchwork automaton, ask mox opal, always yield to that. Keep this mox opal. Um, blue mana, ask emery, I'll mill four. I will sacrifice this, play echo of eons. Oh my god, I did not draw a single castable artifact. I'm so sad. Okay, um Wow, okay. And that means I don't even have like an artifact to like loot that into the graveyard. Okay. Ah. Huh. That was unexpected and quite bad. I'm gonna play Urza Saga. So much for my eleven eleven. <laughs> uh um, to be clear, that was still a pretty nuts turn. I'm going to force a will this Eidolon. Um, you can absolutely hit me. I am uh, not willing to risk losing this Patchwork Automaton here. Like, with Ward 2, this card's pretty safe right now. Um, how good is this Emery? It does not do anything right now. But this is, like... Killing a creature and dealing three damage to me. I probably junk that. And with that, I don't have reps here to know like which one of these cards I pitch. I think I'm going to pitch the Echo without a way to immediately get it out of my hand. No, but I'm not sure because like there's a lot of worlds where I don't end up. Um, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. New Emery. I believe in old Emery here. I lose some pretty heavy value if I whiff here. Um, but I am I am going to trust in my deck to find a single artifact here. Keep the non-summoning sick one. Okay, I found a bobble. Uh, that means I can start the nonsense. I will cast a Riddlesmith. Tap Amory targeting bobble. Play bobble. Alright. I, I can always yield to that. Um, I'm not 100% sure if I can always yield to that one. Um, yes, I will draw a card. I will dis... Okay, my opponent is done with me. That's fine. Uh, we were going to get very far ahead there. It would have taken a couple turns to get a kill, probably, but the Patchwork Automaton was about to get huge. Um, basically, I think I care about Eidolon, and otherwise I probably outpace my opponent a lot of times. I guess, like, my opponent could play something like a Leyline or a Mind Break Trap or something that I technically could care about. So I'll probably play a couple either Chain of Vapor or Dismembers and call it good from there. Oh, um, I didn't mention this in the deck tech. The Brain Freeze is here so that you can theoretically win on turn one. I don't think winning on turn one here is important. I'm going to cut that. Chain of Vapor is not particularly great against the haste creatures. Members better against those, but losing four life versus burn is kind of eh. I go down one of these and play two chain of vapors. Okay. Island, Mox, LED, play Emery, maybe Echo, then have Force plus Emery or an Eidolon or like a Smash or a Meltdown or something crazy. Containment construct, absolutely. Alright. Land. Mox. 
LED Iro Blast. Okay. I will cast an Emery next turn. Like, I could just... Or no, I, I guess I don't have the third artifact. Never mind. Um, That's very annoying, actually. Like, this is a trigger, not a replacement effect. Uh, not, this isn't very good against Echo, but it's really good against Emery, and it's pretty good against this. Is my solution to that just, like, make my opponent pop it, though? It might be. I don't, like, I feel like my hand is just too empty if I force here. Um, like, this Emery is the best thing that I have going on with my hand. Oh, opponent has one land? Yeah, we can, uh, we can make something work here. All right, I have the Chain of Vapor, um, which is Force of Will Fodder at this point. Oh, yeah, that's a lot of goodies. Absolutely. Um, I'm also in the situation where I am operating on a single mana. Um, we'll see if my opponent wants to uh, pop the Relic now. Um, I need to protect this, I think. Like, despite the awkwardness here, with, like, Relic in play. I think I need to protect that card. All right. Um, this is just all sorts of awkward, isn't it? A target Patchwork Automaton. My opponent lets that ability resolve. I could crack LED or mana, cast Patchwork Automaton, and then my opponent doesn't have a chance to exile it. It costs me a lot of cards, but gets me a real threat into play. And, like, my cards are doing me literal nothing in hand right now. All right. Um, let's see if they bite. All right. They do bite. Um, this is a very awkward game. I have absolutely no idea who's favored. Like, it's turn four. My opponent has not dealt me any damage yet, but my opponent is controlling my board. So, like, there's that. Uh, Grim Lava Mancer is very good against what I've got going on. Uh, but my opponent has one card in graveyard because they just exiled all their graveyards. Combo. Like, my, like, if you look at the size of my creatures, though, uh, it's a little rough. Thatch. Grab an island. So, I think I try to overwhelm here. I think I'll go Containment Construct. Load of mana here. Rack LED for blue. This is going to send that to exile. I will leave Oval Chase Daredevil in the graveyard. And I will go ahead and asked my riddle smith using my lion's eye diamond as if it was a black lotus so now opponent can just like go removal spell eat with grim lava mancer or something like that but i kind of force them to use their mana proactively uh, in order to accomplish that and like everything that is not going at my face here is probably good for me um, and now i just have to hope that i can draw some singular card that spirals the game out of control because of things like Patchwork Automaton, I will be holding this for a little while. Um, but this is yeah, this is the point where things are starting to tilt in favor of my opponent. Um, and now that I know about Grim Lava Mancer, like Dismember becomes a more real card that I need to uh, like probably board in. I don't love the life loss associated with it, but it's probably just got to happen. Um, this game was just kind of case of me failing to do my thing like i got to turn seven but i just like never got an engine online all right um at that, at that point i am uh very confident that i am dead all right um so let's go to chain of vapor out uh to dismember in um i don't think i want to go defense grids for pyroblasts uh okay uh this is fine Although, like, a Mind Break Trap sort of card would be pretty darn good against me if my opponent is randomly playing those. Like, given that they've already boarded in, like, Pyroblast and Searing Blazes, the answer is probably no, but you never know. All right. Um, Lotus Petal. LED. This is going to be a one-mana Emery. And now, go ahead and crack this for blue. I'll play an Echo from Graveyard, which kind of redoes my opponent's hand. Uh, then I will go land, pedal, containment construct, bobble, bobble, storm is eight. 
I'll get, uh, uh, opponent has a smash to smithereens coming. I'll get two redraws here. And I am just going to take both immediately because I am a force of will deck. And let's see if these bobbles give me anything good. They do not. Um, I am in very much trouble if my Emery dies turn one. Oh my god. I sent my opponent into a zero lander. Absolutely. All right. Um, it's time to just end this game with an Urza Saga then. All right, so Urza Saga. Get Bobble. Cast Bobble. I just leave this in play as an artifact for the size of the Urza Saga tokens. Like, feel pretty good about that. Yeah, at the end of the day, like, opponent's deck probably doesn't have all that many lands. Yeah, you can, uh, you can Pyroblast that Emery. Like, at this point, it's the Urza Saga. That is the scary thing here. Another Echo is not what I'm looking for, um, but these Urza Saga construct tokens are going to be huge. And if I want, I can also just fish out Lion's Eye Diamond and try to go wild with an Echo. Oh, I didn't even, I didn't even get the chance. Uh, but yeah, it would have been Urza Saga activate, Urza Saga activate, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, once the LED is in play. Yeah, uh, that would have gotten out of control. Okay, uh, we got a turn one containment construct, but like, I don't have any gas here. I just need to mulligan this one. Um, Petal, Opal, Petal, Bobble is four towards Kappa if I don't use the Petals. Uh, this may be turn two Kappas. That's going to be enough for me to keep this hand, I think. All right, this was a mulligan, um, so I'll... Pitch the careful study here, I think. All right. Um, opal, petal, petal, emery. Let's see what we mill. After we're automaton. Uh, okay, this is weird. So, like, I believe opponent has been playing red prison, which means I need to be thinking about like chalices and trinospheres and such, uh, which makes me want to play out the bobble before it can get countered. But patchwork automaton makes me want to wait on that. Um, so I guess I'll wait. There's also a chance, like, opponent is just, like, not playing that deck, right? Okay, yep. Um, uh, Source of Plowshares or Equivalent here would be pretty bad for me. Yeah? Alright. That's a line. This is a situation where I wish I would have played out the bobble. Do I cast this careful stuff? I probably have to. I'm going to try not to discard Kappa. Echo. Okay. Uh, let's discard Echo and Force of Will. And I will play out a Bobble. We're still at four mana sources towards Kappa Cannon here. I probably do not want to Echo until after I cast this Kappa Cannon here. Uh, opponent's deck also might just have... Opponent's deck also might just have... What was I saying? Also might just have, like, some Hull Breacher type things in it that make me um, afraid to echo later on. Hull Breacher or Narset. Um, I do not want to give up a Lotus Petal to cast this card. I wonder if opponent is playing some sort of, like, Stoneblade or Blue-White Delver deck, or if that's just, like, a one-of Wasteland that's an out to things like Field of the Dead in an otherwise, like, Bant Control list or something like that. Ponder's totally fine. Um, no, there are worlds where I, like, I could be casting this Echo instead, but this card's stupid. Ward 4 is just so, so very big. Um, and again, rightly or wrongly, I'm playing towards getting this Kappa Cannon here into play. Ward, Ward 4 is a hell of a drug. Okay, yeah, it is a, it is a Stoneforge deck. Um, Stoneforge for Cauldra will kill me extremely quickly. Oh, it's just, it's just Jitte. Hell yeah. Like, Cauldra could be in hand. All right. Um, so, I have choices. Cauldra is in hand. My line is absolutely just, like, cast this Echo and try to get it out of hand. If my Echo does not resolve, it's very hard for me to ever cast this Kappa. I'm going to get Wastelanded. I don't think I can risk Cauldra being in my opponent's hand right now. Uh, let's Echo. Yeah, uh, a Force of Will would beat the Kappa Cannoneer anyway, right? 
Okay, here is the Force of Will. Um, this is very bad news for me if opponent has Stifle. Um, if opponent has Aldra in hand. Like, if opponent has Caldra and, like, they just, like, Caldra attack me for five and wasteland me, I probably have to, like, crack the bobble, get deeper, but that shuts off Mox Opal, so, like, life's bad. Yeah. Okay, it seems like Caldra is indeed a thing. Okay. Am I cracking the bobble? I don't know. If I crack the bobble and shut off this box opal and then just, like, miss on an artifact, uh, it's an unmitigated disaster. I think I'm just going to eat it. Uh, okay. All right. Here is a very bad situation because, like, I know my opponent has Jitte to just, like, kill these smaller cards in another turn as well. Days. Okay. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna call this one. It's, it's, it's not happening. Um, I will... Probably play some number of Dismember and or Defense Grid. That Cauldra is probably my opponent's only Swift Clock. Um, I think I don't want Force of Will versus my opponent, because like my blue cards are pretty good in this matchup. So I think I'm going to play two Dismember for my opponent's threats and a couple of Defense Grids to shut off counter spells. And call that good. Uh, actually, I don't like Brain Freeze. Let's play one more Defense Grid. Okay, um, I will be keeping this hand. So long term, the plan is make a defense grid, use it to get a Kappa Cannoneer into play, deal with Kappa Cannoneer. The Emery here is essentially going to be like my my bait spell or my test spell. I'm gonna eat like a a counter spell or a piece of removal of some kind. Opal, eat. This means I have two artifacts, making Emery cost one, and. See how juicy this Emery is. Juicy enough. Like, there's stuff in there for me to cast. Like, Recurring Bobble is fine. Containment's Construct is okay. Ooh, and I'm actually going to get to activate the Emery. That's huge. I can probably cast Kappa on my turn three. Okay. I believe the defense grid is important enough here where I try to resolve it first. So let's try this. Ooh, okay. So now I have a choice. I can just take a bobble and straight up draw a card. Or I can go like opal, opal, put a patchwork automaton into play. That's tough. I think I'm going to take the opal line. Puts me a little further away from kappa, but like patchwork automaton is baby kappa that like kind of has protection from swords to plowshares. So like there's that. This is my shield. I'm admittedly on a pretty threat dense hand. That's not always going to happen. So like this defense grid looks particularly good, but like there's other times where I could be staring down like a couple of oval chase daredevils in my hand or something, and uh defense grids wouldn't feel quite as good there. No white mana still. Uh, that's a delver. Uh yeah, this turn's gonna be pretty good for me. Alright, so play Urza Saga. One Two, three, four, five, e six. Target Mishra's Bobble. Cast Mishra's Bobble. Always yield to that. Kappa. One, two, three. Doesn't have any weird to untap claws, right? Four, five, six. There's Kappa. Uh, I have a lot of power in play and an Urza Saga backing me up. Um, Kappa Cannoneer is whenever an artifact ETBs, uh, whereas Patchwork Automaton is on cast, so my Kappa would get bigger off the Urza Saga token that was about to come. All right, uh, now that I know that my opponent also has Delvers, um, I'm gonna bring in one defense grid and just, like, get rid of one of these. I'm also considering Pithing Needle just for Wasteland, and I guess Stoneforge Mystic. So I think my biggest issue here is that I really only have five threats versus this deck at the end of the day. Right? Like, I have Automaton, Automaton, Kappa, Double, Urza Saga. I don't have that many ways to actually win the game. So, you pick that in mind. I probably need as many things as possible to go and protect them. And I'm not sure how many of those I can board out without, like, dismantling my engine. But it feels like that's not a card that I want to draw here. 
getting some, uh, like, I think it was Max Storshin who was championing, championing Blue White Delver a couple years back, like, being better than it looked of just, like, Swords of Plowshares giving your opponent life isn't as bad as you think if you just, like, keep hitting them with a Delver and they're still losing. My hand's okay. It's not great. I probably mulligan this one. Uh, okay. Make this work. Opal, Petal, Petal, Defense Grid, LED, Echo, Shenanigans. Drunk like a bobble here. Alright, uh, this is a YOLO hand. Absolutely a YOLO hand. But it's a YOLO hand with protection, so that's worth something. Opponent will have six cards in hand. We get three more looks at a force effect. Okay, and that is a shuffle. Um, I am fine with doing this. Means I don't have to crack lotus petals to do what I'm about to do. There's my land drop. Let's play some cards. I want to play defense grid around days. That's going to be pretty important here, because that's... Yeah, and this accomplishes that goal without showing my LED that's coming. Okay, uh, it's in play. We're going. Let's restart the game, but it's still my turn. All right. Echo. Um, how do I want to do this? Whatever I do just resolves. Emery burns fewer resources, but, like, I think getting this into play is just better, because, like, it just has Ward 2, and then I can work on things that make it better next turn. My opponent is playing with a random opening hand, so, like, they have what they have. So we'll see if they're just, like, going for a Stoneforge Cauldra race situation, or if they're just gonna fuck me. All right. Um, so I luckily drew another island. So, like, that's nice. I need Emery here. Yeah, uh, that really shut me down pretty hard. Uh, just in terms of churning through my cards. Like, I don't get to play both Riddlesmith and Emery uh, in that turn cycle there because of Stony Silence. And, like, I drew my opponent into that. So, like, that is what it is. Uh, but, like, you put cards like this and Meltdown into your deck because of, like, the massive impact that they have on a game, right? Okay, sure. I would love a careful study to just, like, loot these dead cards out of my hand. Like, my Riddlesmith is kind of like a careful study. But I'm uh, very much expecting my Emery to die right here. So, something. Oh, okay. Um, this is probably just going to be a shuffle for that brainstorm. Yeah, that's that's a shuffle. You have a swords. Seems like yes. Okay, goodbye, Emery. Um, that was kind of important. That was going to let me get more bodies and grow Patchwork Automaton. Um, that is what it is. Um, I will ask this to do this stuff. Uh, let's loot. Dunk a seat, turn it into a real land. You know, I'm going to keep my old Mox Opal. I'm just a little sentimental in that way. Uh, bash in for three. Um, at the end of the day, I have five power in play, but my situation is not fantastic. I I'm essentially looking to draw another banger like Kappa Cannoneer. So I'm looking for Automaton, Saga, Saga, Cannoneer... Three Emery's as my best draws. Sort of like a chain of vapor to bounce that Stony Silence out of play. Even if I did, I don't know how much that would actually matter given board. Oh, okay. Um, red confirmed. And if you have Stony Silence and Meltdown, just absolutely fuck me. Uh, Alright. Uh, opponent is unquestionably ahead at this point. Like, I have a six-turn clock in play and a whole bunch of dead cards. In the world where I draw a Kappa Cannoneer, I would like to play that around a daze, which I can already do. Three, six, seven. Uh, so I will hold these so I can potentially loot them. Um, that's fine. But opponent playing any sort of, like, Planeswalker or Threat... 
uh, it is just horrific for me. Like, they might have a couple of dead or dead-ish counter spells in hand, but life's bad. How many lands am I actually playing? Just curiosity 13. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, this game is attempt to limp over the finish line before my opponent finds, like, Merktide or Stoneforge Mystic or Equivalent. I don't really care about a Delver. Like, it will kill me. But it kills me slowly in comparison to those other cards. Okay, yeah. So, life's bad. I'll have about five turns. I want to also just straight up could get a Jete. And just use that to dis... Oh, they're going for Bower Skull. Reasonable. Uh, so I probably can't attack with Riddlesmith, because if I attack with Riddlesmith, my opponent just blocks with Stoneforge Mystic, hard casts Batter Skull, and, like, that's still a problem. Prismatic Ending... Oh, okay, sure. Um, this is not nothing. <laughs> like, this forces my opponent to spend five mana to hard cast the batter skull, maybe meaning that they can't defense grid something else that I do. Um, but like, very, very much at the mercy of the top of the deck here. Um, for the record, my opponent does have stony silence, so if I were to somehow... Oh man, maybe I fucked that up. Maybe because of the Stony Silence, I'm actually supposed to hold the Dismember for the Batter Skull Germ token. And Deafening Silence. Okay, that's bad. Hold that for a Planeswalker. Yeah, I think I was supposed to hold the Dismember for the Batter Skull Germ. Uh, my, my situation is horrible, but like my opponent could not have bounced the Germ. Didn't uh, adjust my heuristics for like, the context of this game. For the record, I think even if I kill the germ, I'm still a huge dog in this game at this point. Like, it's turn 7, my opponent has two very strong hate permanents in play. Um, how many islands are in my deck? There are three islands in my deck, so that fetch land is not live. My opponent doesn't know that. Um, basically, I think at this point I'm hoping for Kappa Cannoneer, and my opponents like Force and Wills and such are going to be live. Like, they can just pay for those. Um, with another Stoneforge here, even if I had dismembered this, like, a Jete or a Cauldra just beats me. Uh, I'm gonna take exactly one more draw and concede. Like, unless it's, like, Kappa Cannoneer as that card, I just don't think I can win from there. Actually, I can do this, name Stoneforge Mystic, and make my opponent have more mana sources in order to cast Cauldra. Uh, but this still just means I want to turn clock in a different way, I guess. Yeah, right? Like, yeah, because the opponent just attacks for five twice, and I die. All right, um, let's, uh, let's call it there. I think I misplayed a little bit, but I don't think, yeah, that's not castable. I don't think these top cards are getting me to where I need to be. Like, my opponent has had so much time to find counter spells, and I can't do, like, Oh, play Emery into Echo the same turn because of this, and my artifact mana's off. That's tough. Okay. Um, Land Opal, Lotus Petal, Riddlesmith, Float Mana, Opal, Discard, Echo? And I'm on the draw? Uh, that's weird. I can't, like, immediately Echo, but I can Echo the following turn. Um, let's see where this goes. I think this hand is a little low power level, but, like, I haven't had the Riddlesmith hand yet, if that makes sense, and I would kind of like to see what that looks like. All right. Yeah. Riddlesmith. Cast Opal. Do this trigger. Discard an Echo. Keep the new Mox Opal. Do I want to play a new Riddlesmith here. Doing so means that I do not guarantee to have three mana for Echo next turn, so I don't think I do. I think I just uh, just stop there. Uh, we're probably playing against a blue Urza Saga deck, some sort of like uh, Kappa Cannoneer sort of deck. Chrome Mox is neat. Ooh, bonus doing some similar shit to what I'm doing. Oh, like I just... You just do it, right? Like, this is what I came here to do. Opponent might just, like, 
straight up force of negation this. I still think I'd do it. Fuck me. Uh, okay. Did not think we were going that direction exactly. Ah. Uh, son of a bitch. Alright, so in case you don't know how this interaction works, what happens is I get no cards, my opponent gets seven cards and seven treasures, and uh, absolutely fuck me. <laughs> uh. Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, I absolutely thought that opponent had played out uh, that for something different. I guess that makes, like, that's why they have Chrome Mox, is to try to do that more consistently. Um, I think I'm kind of screwed. Like, if my opponent is a pile of, like, Narsets and Hull Breachers, life's real bad. And I don't know that sideboarding makes things much better. Like, I'll play a couple of Dismembers. Four hull breachers. Uh, I think I'm gonna board out the brain freeze. I don't. I don't know if I'm supposed to defense grid or not. Like, I just need to try to kill my opponent. This is this hand is entirely dependent on this Emery surviving and doing well. Um, if it's the case that this, like this Emery, either like doesn't live or doesn't hit good things, I think I'm in trouble. A containment construct is in there. Eh. Oh, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's also the worlds where my opponent just, like, echoes right now. That's a thing as well. Um, let's bobble. My right, opponent is drawing more mana. Uh, careful study. I think I'm just going to cast that and try to, uh, do something a little more impressive with this hand. Uh, let's discard these, because I can get them back. I'm going to go land drop. Fetch here. Yeah. I'm going to get weird. Uh. Ah. Uh. All right. That's weird. What is it? What am I doing with Emery? I'm going to get an LED back. All right. So, putting that artifact into play allows me to trigger all three of these. Mm, I should have cracked. Ah, I fucked that up. So I should have double cracked LED in response and then cast Echo and then return these afterwards. Uh, okay, but I've I've already fucked that up. So like that is what it is. Uh, let's just cast this. Uh, that's one of those things that like if you've played the deck for a little while, like you'll have it figured out. Or no, I, I guess doing it the other way doesn't matter, right? Because like this shuffles graveyard. Yeah, so I don't get to keep that stuff. Um, but it's, like, relevant for if the Echo doesn't resolve. There's also a line where I crack LED to play Patchwork Automaton this turn and then Echo next turn, but every turn I wait on the Echoes, they just get worse. My opponent thought for a very long time and then Force of Willed. So they Force of Willed pitching an Echo, which is why they thought for so long, right? Because, like, that's something that is central to their own deck's plan. All right, uh, Day's Undoing. So I've got Gas. Um, I have Force of Will and Blue Card for a Hall Breacher. Um, or Dismember for... Wow, okay. Kind of thought I'd hit an artifact. Not so much. All right. Uh, Daredevils can go to Graveyard. I will get them back later. Um, double Force of Will currently available. Play containment construct. I think it's better to play Riddlesmith, but I don't really want to tap out for Riddlesmith currently. Not gonna attack with Emery. Like in case opponent is sandbagging end of turn hold reacher. Like I think they would fire it off in response to the careful study, but this this game is not about singular points of damage. This game is going to be about like one person having an overwhelming something or other. No. Force that pitching Emery. Their LEDs are fine. Uh huh. And what's the follow up? Six, eight. That's, oh, it's a flashback echo. Um. There's eight mana floating. Okay, I think I just say no to that. That's uh that's a tough one. 
but I don't think I let my opponent do that with that much mana floating, despite the fact that my own hand would improve. Hey, careful study. Uh, let's discard these two cards. Say no to both of those. Going to play out a Riddle Smith. Let's go Opal. I'll draw a card. I discard my Dismember here. Yeah, I guess I'll exile that. Now this returns these. And now I get to start doing card advantage things here. I cast Lotus Petal, uh, which means I get to loot. Discard one of these. No to that. And then I return this. Now we'll play a Petal. And repeat this process. I don't think I am going to just echo immediately. Oh, it just has zero cards. This just hard cast one of these just as a threat. Very potentially. Like, make a black mana, target this lotus petal, cast this, do my whole looting thing again, uh, use that ability, bounce you. Getting another Riddlesmith into play is super interesting. That makes me want to, like, not hardcast these and just, like, play this. And then next turn I can be drawing two cards per artifact that I cast. That's fine. If my opponent had more cards, I would be kind of interested in casting Echo because, like, it would be a draw seven for both of us. Uh, yeah, uh, but opponent is just not going to mess around with this engine because I, I would draw pretty much my entire deck there. I don't think I'm going to change anything about sideboarding. Like, there's things I can do, but every card, like, say, Leyline of the Void or Chain of Vapor that I board in to mess around with my opponent's permanence is one thing that isn't just gas for me. Um, turn one, careful study, discard an Echo, or turn one, Emery. Hands okay. I guess I'll keep it. It's... Like, it's hard, because on the draw, like, I might just, like, lose my hand anyway. All right, dismember. All right. So, artifact. Artifact. Emery now costs one. Mystical Dispute. Uh, a little unexpected. Not, like, out of place in the deck or anything, but... That very much stops the primary thing my hand had going for it. Now I'm, like, very afraid of my opponent just playing a whole Breacher. Yeah... Uh, so now my entire hand doesn't work. Um, if my opponent echoes here while I don't have the dismember up, I'm fucked. Yeah. Um, we're just we're just gonna concede there. Uh, opponent is the uh, the superior deck in this pseudo mirror. What's my record now? Am I one and two? I'm one and two. Hey folks, I hope you're enjoying the show. If you are, please consider doing something to support me. You can do plenty of things for free without using any money, uh, like liking and commenting on the video or subscribing to the channel. Those sorts of things support me, and if you're in a position that you can support me financially, you can do so by doing a donation deck list, becoming a YouTube member, or uh, following me on Patreon. All right, that's the plug. Back to the magic. Okay. Um, how good is turn one Riddlesmith? Let's keep this and see where it goes. Like, this isn't exactly a broken hand, but this is a hand that will filter a lot of cards. So, oh, wow, are we playing against humans again? Warrior. Hell yeah. Why am I playing Seat? Probably Seat for, like, Metalcraft reasons. Let the games begin. So, let's loot. I don't think I'm super interested in careful study right now. Although, I don't know. Maybe. Looted Courtyard. That's another one of those. Yeah, okay. Maybe I'm supposed to keep it for Force of Will Fodder and discard one of the lands. But, like, I don't know what land I want to discard right now. Because, like, these lands do very, very different things. Whenever another warrior enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Let's Let's just say no. Like, that's not a super powerful card or anything, but I'm just going to hope that I end up doing something kind of broken here. Uh, so I'll loot. 
Looking for a daredevil here. Um, Emery is good. Is Emery better than just activating Urza Saga next turn? I don't have Metalcraft yet for this Mox Opal. I want to say no to Emery, despite the fact that I quite like it. And then I'll poke my opponent for two. Um, very interested to see where opponent's deck list is going. Yeah, this was the other reason to just force, is like force while my force is still a live card. The reason not to force is to try to turn them into other cards via Riddlesmith. And my opponent just has another one of those. All right. Play another seat. Uh, I will I will bash in with both of these. I will absolutely trade here. Opponent says no. One, two, three. My Urza Saga is a 4-4 four, four already. Opponent's mana base is beautiful. Or untapped five color lands. Uh, I I love this as a printing, by the way. Like, I I love these tribal lands that enable the fringe decks to kind of do their thing. Oh, I played this one before. So whenever this thing attacks, um, you can create a one one warrior token that's a tapping, a attacked and a tapping. You know what? You make an idiot. Um, and that's like a very cute combo here uh, with the decorated champion. And I'll go for end of turn token, draw a card, make my token, search for LED. Guess I find an echo. I don't know. Maybe I'll just take a bobble. All right. Um, let's play a lotus petal. Discard an echo. Uh, which I guess I can do. Hey, that's an Oval Chase Daredevil. Uh, I will return that to my hand. Uh, okay. So I guess I will go to combat and bash for my seven. When it does go to seven. Do I echo? I think I don't echo. I think I think I'm just the beat down. I don't think I give my opponent those cards. And like the warrior that's created off of this is tapped and attacking. So, like, that's not going to just create infinite blockers or anything. Ooh, black mana as well. All right. Warriors, your team controls have haste. That's super interesting wording. Whenever this attacks, you can pay two if you do return. Okay, cool. Yeah, I've played that in red-white taxes a couple of times way back in the day. <laughs> I think my opponent just gave us the GG's. They said, like, Saga token is strong. Oh, excuse me, a warrior you control? Neat. Didn't realize that was for everyone. Uh, that is going to be a very large decorated champion. Uh, let's just go ahead and yield to those things. Uh, so I can go ahead and just take a block on one of these random creatures. And I'll take 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 17, 18, double check, 9, and 11. Well, I guess I can just like block again, right? 9, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, that was like surprisingly scary. Uh, that plus this is a gross little combo. Okay, um, I will probably play my two cards worth of interaction with creatures and call it good. My cavern, or sorry, my force of wills aren't particularly strong, and I've just boarded the brain freeze out every round. Um, I really like the force of wills when my opponent doesn't have cavern. I'm not 100% sure if I want to trim a force of will or a daredevil here. I think I'm going to trim a daredevil. It's like the force of will stopping the two mana green card is probably pretty good when my opponent doesn't have cavern. Um, Ox Opal doesn't get turned on here to play turn one Emery. Uh, let's just mulligan this hand. I have no way to loot that echo into my graveyard. I think I'm going to five here. The five card hand does not look good. At this point, am I trying to mulligan to an Echo Hand? Because, like, on five, I'm probably pitching these two and trying to do something with this. I think I'm looking for Echo. Um, this might be good enough to keep on four. Just, like, these four cards. I think I'm on board with this. Like, there is a 
a chance for this hand to play magic if Emery hits well. Like, for example, Emery can hit um, LED and Echo. I don't imagine my opponent has very many turn one warrior plays. Like, I think it's kind of, eh, that's not exactly what I'm looking for in a draw. Uh, kind of is what it is. Um, but I don't know exactly what they're, oh, that's Echo. So if I keep this, I can always play Mox Opal from Graveyard and then turn to Echo. Um, so I will not crack this looking for Force of Will. Ugh, okay. All right, so for forces are off. All right, Decorated Champion is the name of that card. Okay. Well, I would have found the Force of Will, but it wouldn't have done me any good. All right, so Emery, Target Mox Opal, Ast Mox Opal, one, two, three mana Echo, Saga? Probably Immediate Saga. It will use to dismember that creature. And I will go ahead and just play my Lotus Petal now. I will keep the Bobble in play for the size. Actually, no, that's not true. I want to draw. Ooh. Uh, finishing the thought, I want to draw because it allows me to just replay the bobble with Emery again. All right, there's another decorated champion. Well, what is that? I do not know this card. Each other warrior creature you control enters with a counter. Each creature you control with a counter has trample. Okay. That's, uh, that is a combo. Let's see what I get off this riddle smith. Okay. So let's go feet. Riddle Smith, Target Bobble, Ast Bobble. I'll loot away the Daredevil here and return it. Yes. I will play a containment construct. Loot. Disc. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yes. LED. I guess it doesn't matter in which order I do this here. Return the Daredevil. Going to rack that for mana. Um, I will do this to the Daredevil. I will do this to one Echo. I will do this to the Emery. I'll do this to the Scalding Tarn. Then I will not do this to Echo. And then I'll go three mana, draw seven. Aha! We're going off. Oh, please, please no. Whatever this is, no. Or is this opponent just, okay. This is opponent just F6-ing to just, or like, no, they're not F6-ing. They're just getting that card out of their hand. Okay. Here we go. LED. Um, I will draw my card. I'll discard a force. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll use that ability. Um, do a Mox Opal. We're, we're just kind of filtering here. Dunk of Force of Will. Uh, yeah, I'll use that ability. Keep this Mox Opal. Make a mana. Play a new Mox Opal. Um, like, discard one of these Riddle Smiths here. I'm not going to get all of those into play. Or am I? Actually, LED is a hell of a drug. Keep a new Mox Opal. At this point, I think I'm going to go ahead and dismember this large creature. Um, I maybe could have not paid life for that. I think I'm going to go careful study. Ew. Discard one of each of these. And yeah, I guess I'll use those abilities. Then let's go three mana and cast an Emery from here. Keep the untapped one, I guess. Mill some more cards. Okay. And let's go two mana. Casting one of these. And a bobble for good measure. Unsettled Mariner. Alright. Not a bad turn. I did not successfully echo again with Containment Construct. Like, I kind of was trying to find another LED or something to let me do that. What is this? Kutaki. Oh no. Kutaki's very good. Um, that's a spirit. Um, that is a very potent sideboard card, though. 
I'm just playing the Settled Mariner. Yeah, so that'll be a 3-3 Trampler base. Okay. Um, I'll pay for that. I, I really want to pay for my artifacts here. Um, mostly to keep my count high for Urza's Saga. Other Echo is in exile. Not in graveyard. All right, play this. Cast LED. I'll do some looting. Uh, that is exactly the card I am looking for. I'll draw again. Discard again. Um, yeah, I guess I'll exile that. LED enters, giving me Oval Chase Daredevil. Now, I could junk LED to play that. I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to Emery getting a Bobble. I'll cast Bobble, and then I get to do the whole Riddlesmith thing. Oh, and I'll loot. Bobbles are great. Oh, yeah, I can uh, absolutely just play that for free. All right, this is cool. All right, so I will cast this free Lotus Petal and do my looting. And the second time around, I'll discard. Just discard the Force of Will. And I return this. And uh, we continue this chain and see how deep I can end up going. Land is kind of whatever. All right, return you. Now, cast Opal. A lot of clicks. Discard uh, land, I guess. Keep the untapped one. Turn this. Uh, we are doing a thing. I don't know how far this is going to get me in the face of Kataki. Uh, but we'll try. I'm to the point where I can cast some very large and dumb stuff. And like, I'm getting ahead on cards. But, uh, block is a concern, I guess. Um, I, I need to find something big and dumb like uh, Kappa Cannoneer to just win with. That's, uh, kind of the dream here. Um, I'm I'm very much coming out ahead on cards, but I have not found any way to kill my opponent yet. Uh, there's an Echo. That's very good. Uh, we'll kind of preemptively throw that in the graveyard. We'll use this ability. Okay. Um, I am not sure at what point I Echo. I have 13 cards left. I'm going to find my fucking Kappa Cannoneer. Discard Daredevil. <laughs> Alright, there's another Daredevil. I swear there's win conditions in this deck. Alright, I get to return both of these. Alright, um... Blue mana, careful study. I'll junk both daredevils here. No. No. To play a new artifact. So there's blue, one, another one of these. Junking lands. Okay, uh... <laughs> I'm starting to get a little scared. Uh, this is also just going to be more triggers that I have to junk through. I've just told my opponent, like, Kappa's in here somewhere. I will find it. All right, I found a patchwork automaton. Uh, so I'll be, I'll be okay. All right. So one, two mana. There's a patchwork automaton. Okay, there's another one. And discard that. Alright, there's a real win condition. Now, let's play Bobble, and lend I'm just kind of hoping that I find Kappa. Okay, there's Kappa. Discard that. Say no. Say no to that, just in case I don't accidentally deck myself. Yes. Okay, now... I will discard my hand for blue mana. Uh, I'm going to just always yes to that and always yield to that here. Uh, I guess no to Scalding Tarn. All right. Just, 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 just click through with yes. All right. Discard my hand. Make a bunch of mana. I guess I don't want to do Kappa 
first. I probably want to do Patchwork Automaton first. I say no to these so I don't deck myself here. Always yield to that. Play Patchwork Automaton. Play Kappa Cannoneer. Alright, cool. Uh, actually, I did that sloppily. I was supposed to echo after doing that. I guess I'll do that next turn. Uh, that was sloppy on my end. I should have just tapped some more artifacts for Kappa. Huh. Yeah, I think I lost myself the game by not uh, echoing immediately by tapping extra artifacts. I just kind of got lost in all my triggers. Uh-oh. I can't really draw extra cards here. All right. I um I will pay for Kappa Cannoneer. I will pay for Patchwork Automaton. Oh, this gets destroyed. I guess I'm hoping one of my last two cards is LED. And the rest of this stuff is just going to go. Oh, I just have uh, Emery LED. It's fine. All right. Emery. Target Lion's Eye Diamond. Past Lion's Eye Diamond. Um, let's always yield to these. I guess I can always yield to those. I just need to say no for right now. I think I probably kill with Kappa Cannoneer alone this turn. Uh, it's going to be large. Uh, okay. Now, crack for blue. Cast that. Uh, yeah, you can absolutely put in some creature here. I don't know you. Never enters a battlefield. Okay, cool. So my opponent has a double striking trampling 4-4. Four -four. <clears throat> All right, let's uh, let's do some stuff. Um, we'll just uh be looting away uh anything that I cannot just like immediately play. Twenty cards remaining in my deck. Um, basically, I'm trying to make it so that Kappa alone kills my opponent. I don't need Dismember here. Eighteen cards left. Duncan Emery, that's fine. A containment construct, I guess. Actually, containment construct is okay. All right. Uh, sorry, I am very much focusing on my clicks here. Uh, there's probably going to be some lost uh, visuals here when it gets down to the editing stage. Um, so apologies for that, but I do not have a lot of time, and I need to click on a lot of cards. Petal. A few more counters. Duncan Opal. Duncan Opal. And near again. At 12 life. Duncan Opal. A careful study. And here's a 12 12. I think this is the point where if I don't hit a Daredevil, I'm in trouble. Pedal. That's a pedal. Yeah, I think I've kind of fizzled out here. Okay. Um. I probably just hold these. I, I probably just attack with Kappa Cannoneer. Although I guess I get some chump blocks off. Yeah, because like e each one of those just has to be blocked. That's fine. And then I probably just kill my opponent next turn. Uh, I have used so much clock in this match. All right, cool. Um, and I will go ahead and just kind of uh, do these immediately. Call it a turn. It's possible I'm not supposed to attack with these, but like every body I take off the battlefield is one more thing that I don't have to chump block. Like this trample double strike situation is not great for me, which is maybe a reason to leave these back. But if I miss on an artifact as my draw for the next turn, I don't actually have lethal because I don't or next. No, actually, I would have because Emery could have played one from the graveyard. Um, so maybe there's some worlds where I'm dead for making the attack. But I'm like very much in. I need to make a decision quickly mode. Like, I am down 14 minutes on clock. I've never played against my opponent's deck. Sure. Okay, that's fine. All right. So, another creature you control gets double... Wait, why can't I block? Double strike. Creature with Creatures with power less than Champion of Lampholt's power can't block creatures you control. Creatures you control. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I guess I should have played around Champion of Landhold by uh, leaving those back. Okay, yeah, I guess I'm dead. Okay. Uh, uh, 
I think I am just going to go ahead and concede here. I do not think I can uh, win the game in two minutes here. Uh, I I am I am good with that. I should have left my creatures back. Um, I'm I'm just gonna go ahead and concede that one there. Um, I could have played that match better, but I had just used so much of my clock, and I was just trying to finish that game. Um. So I can go Lotus Petal, Bobble, Bobble, Emery, take two immediate redraws, and have an Emery. Uh, I think this hand is going to be too bad against both Counterspells and Removal. I'm going to Mulligan and just try to find something a little more stable. Um, this is not stable, but it echoes with Force of Will back up, um, so I guess I'm keeping that. Dunk the Patchwork Automaton there. I am not sure if I'm supposed to play the Urza Saga. I am going to, but that may legitimately be a mistake oh i actually i guess they don't really force a will with echo back up right that's not exactly how that works all right echo um okay opal this is not turned on led patchwork automaton i will immediately crack this that's a mountain um my hand's pretty bad my stuff on board is very good. Um, if we're just playing against, like, Burn or something, I can probably spiral out of control with Patchwork Automaton and Urza Saga. Um, Lava Spike is fine. I am absolutely the beat down here. Uh, yeah. Uh, sadly, attack for one. I'm not casting Careful Study. Um, I think that's just better as Force of Will fodder. Um, that will absolutely ruined me because that uh this is whenever a player casts a spell if no mana was spent to cast it so my zero mana spells would start costing me five life uh, is absolutely no good um, but this is this is just going to be an urza saga backed by two counter spells just uh wrecking this game a bobble um i'll play the land drop it, like technically matters ever so slightly but i think i just have so much power in play that my opponent can't win honestly that's a chump blocker no we are we are in like i am killing you next turn range yeah okay uh if my opponent has like both roiling vortex and eidolon it's gonna be really hard for me to win like these these are the things that i can think about Brain freeze goes out. I don't think I have too much time to set up that stuff. Three question mark. Two dismembers, two chains question mark. I DK. Go down one of these. I don't think I can like overload on the chain effects because I just have to keep a critical density of artifacts. So for example, with that hand, my patchwork automaton didn't actually do anything. Um, this has a turn one echo. Like we'll we'll see where it goes. All right. That is a creature. Uh, that's fine. This is one point of damage this turn. That's totally okay. I'm at 19. Alright. I would love to play an Urza Saga on turn 1. I think I am going to risk not playing a land. No, that's not true, actually. So I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is now turned on. I can go 2 mana or a Riddle Smith. Then junk my hand for blue, play Echo, and then I can start getting Riddle Smith value. Uh, yeah, we're potentially going places here. So I get my Oval Chase Daredevil thing going immediately. So that's nice. Lotus Petal. And now we're now we're just looking for a real win condition. Um, I will be able to Echo again, uh, which is super cool. Uh, this is us doing the broken thing very quickly. Um, so I dig that. Yes, I'll use this ability. Do I want to careful study before drawing seven? I don't th think so. I think I'm just going to... Oh, okay, sure. All right, uh, so we end up 2-3 in this league, um, which probably would have been a 3-2 if I didn't attack with the two patchwork automatons, uh, but I absolutely did not know to play around Champion of Lambholt. Uh, but like, I probably shouldn't have made that attack anyway. Just didn't have the time to process it. Okay. 
Um, overall thoughts on the deck list. I probably wouldn't play this on Magic Online again because of how long it takes you to click through the combo. Most of the rounds were fine, but when you have both Riddle Smith and Containment Construct in play, you just have so many things to click through, and it's not easy to just always yield to them because sometimes you do want things under Containment Construct and sometimes you don't. Um, yeah. Um, I feel like the Brain Freeze was unnecessary. I boarded it out every round, and... In most cases, if we were going off on turn one, we didn't need to literally kill on turn one or like we were going to lose ever. And by the time you get to the point where you are churning through your entire deck, like you can probably build a good enough board to win in most cases. Um, I don't know that you need all four oval, oval chase daredevils. Like they're really good. I think you can get away with three. I would be interested in cutting Brain Freeze and Oval Chase Daredevil for two more win conditions of some kind, just so, like, you have an easier time. Like, my Patchwork Automatons and my Kappa Cannoneer in, in versus that Warriors deck were just in my last couple of cards, and if that were any matchup where my opponent had more interaction, I would have just, like, died for having to dig through 50-plus cards to find a win condition. Um, so I'm interested in more win conditions in the deck. Um, the sideboard stuff's okay, but as a mono blue deck, you're not, like, super good at answering things. Chain of Vapor is an okay stopgap. Like, if you just need to bounce something out of play and then win, that works. But it doesn't long-term answer some problematic things. So, like, this deck was okay, but I, I wouldn't recommend playing it on Magic Online just purely for the clicks involved. This is one of those, like, decks that's much smoother to play in paper. All right, I am ex mentally exhausted after piloting that deck. I'm going to call it a day here, folks. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please click the like button on your way out. It helps out a lot. If you have any thoughts on optimizing the deck for Magic Online or something, please leave those in the comment section. All right, see ya.